Welcome to Europe PCR 2021. My name is Wolfgang Rothbauer, head of the Department of Cardiology at the Ulm University, Germany. I'm happy to have the opportunity today to look with two real experts and pioneers on the percutaneous tricuspid valve treatment, namely Professor Ralf Bardeleben from Mainz, Germany, and Professor Georg Nickenick from Bonn, Germany, in this distinct um, treatment um, options of tricuspid regurgitation with the Edwards portfolio. In the next 15 minutes, the three of us um, will try to give an overview of three distinct devices for targeted treatment of tricuspid um, regurgitation. Especially, we will have an overview how these devices look like, how they work, when to use them, and what the clinical outcome data is so far. Much of the clinical results um, will be or were already shown in late plaguing trials of the Euro PCR 2021. Here you see the broad Edwards portfolio on interventional treatment of tricuspid regurgitation. From a historical perspective, it started with the cardio band initially for mitral valve repair in 2015, followed by its systematic use in 2018 in, on tricuspid valve, tricuspid regurgitation. In 2019, the Pascal repair system was introduced for leaflet repair first on the mitral valve and in 2020 for repair on tricuspid um, valve uh, pathologies. Finally, and we will discuss that today, there are future developments and such as uh, the complete um, valve replacement of the tricuspid valve um, with the evoke system. And we will focus on that too. What you see here is the Pascal platform. And now welcome again, um, Georg, um, would you mind um, um, to explain to us um, the Pascal system, the main features and, and what is the difference to the ACE that is shown on the right? Uh, sure, I will. Thank you very much for, for the introduction and for involving me. Uh, what you see here is a, is a Pascal device, the two different forms, if you will, the classical form, the classic and, and the ACE device. Uh, it's, uh, and that is true for both. It comes via a transvenous puncture, via a steerable guide into the uh, mitral or here in the tricuspid space. And then you add actually two, two additional components, which makes the system extremely flexible. You can steer it in the right atrium in all three uh, dimensions, which is very, very important, which is, the, which is not uh, explicitly shown here on that slide. Why is that important? Because trajectory and also distance to the annulus is extremely important to be very variable with your system because sometimes you are very prone to the septal side or to the anterior side of the valve and you can get around this with this, with this device very easily. Uh, as I pointed out, it's a 90 nodal design. Both have a, have a span of 25 millimeters and the ACE device which I think most of us use predominantly in, in the dry cuspid has a width between four and six millimeters of, of their clasp. So it's a, it's a pretty large device, uh, what we need in the dry cuspid space. It has uh, the possibility to use the clasps independently, uh, which means you could, for example, start with the anterolateral leaflet, if, if you will, and could then steer the system uh, towards the septal leaflet and clasp the second leaflet then uh, with the second clasps, uh, which enables to, to deal with larger gaps. There is a central spacer in between is there in order to reduce the residual central um, jet of the regurgitation. And then you have the possibility to, to elongate the whole system so that you can um, exclude uh, entanglement into cordae. And I think that is in a nutshell, the most, these are the most important features of the device. Okay. Yeah, I think this was very helpful um, to the auditorium to explain the main features, especially the flexibility and the non-entangling in, in the uh, tricuspid apparatus. Ralph, it's, it's now up to you. I think um, we will see there are some um, data from uh, your group 
Um, could could you explain them? Um, what is the what are the first clinical results we've seen so far, and what's the fascinating um, point about that? I, I think with the introduction here of the Pascal experience, and especially also later what we will see with the ACE, uh, we have a very performance system, as you can see on the left-hand side. So the first aim of a tricuspic valve repair system is, of course, to treat the tricuspic regurgitation. And we can nicely see from the color change here on the left-hand side on 28 patients from the compassionate use, how the TR5+, uh, plus, which is torrential, and 4+, plus, which is massive in the new Becky Hahn grading uh, scheme, really changes to green colors. And what is nice in this depiction is that you can see what kind of patients stay in the same group and what kind of patients really leave the group to either a better or to a worse graduation. And you can see that most of the patients here change to better graduations in the first uh, 30 days. And you can see that up to 22 months, the results of 30 days are very stable and maintained. And this is actually an experience that we have from a lot of transcatheter systems. So in the beginning, we were unsure about this treatment stability on the reduction of the regurgitation. But we can say now that in both an MR and in TR, 30 day results are very predictive of one year and two year results. On the right hand side, you can see that the New York Heart Association class change is even more pronounced. We can see that we achieve a majority of patients which reaches 90% into um, New York Heart Association class one or two. So with a possible, because this is of course a single arm compassionate use treatment with a potential part of a small placebo effect, we see that this is very, very helpful, both clinically and in the regurgitation level. Terrific. So we will even see more data. Maybe, Ralph, you continue on that. And, and what's the major difference now when you look in, in a real-life world experience? What, what, what do you think about these results combined from um, four different sites? As we see, TR severity change is uh, even more pronounced. What we also see is that there's a very, very small number maintaining torrential or massive TR, which is here only 1%. These are high volume centers. So this shows, of course, that it's very important um, to have high volume centers in order to be effective. And what we see here is that a very good reduction is done in a post-procedural and follow-up situation in 83 to 90%. We also see that post-procedural results in the CAF lab can sometimes overestimate a little bit the reduction, but follow-up is very stable and also very beneficial. So 83% is about the range we had in early experience mitral. And we have to remember that our transcatheter tricuspic experience is of course less than our mitral experience. New York Heart Association class was changed similarly. Perhaps the centers treated a different kind of patients in the commercial arena. We can see that the New York Heart Association classes are perhaps a little bit more realistic than what we have seen in the early compassionate use that are highly selected. Class PR is a US trial so far. So Europe is not involved in comparison to compassionate use uh, and to the early commercial experience. But we can see that actually we see the results reproduced, which is very beneficial. So the US uh, intervention cardiologists have a lower number of uh, rolling experience in tricuspic treatment. And even with the smaller number of rollings, we can see that 78% compares favorable to 83%, so that we have a very high reproducibility actually of the results as we see here. So these results again are comparable to the compassionate use experience gained in Europe, here in the US. Great, so that's very fascinating. So I think we move on to the next topic. Well, I might even think we don't need other devices, but, but Georg, I would like you to explain to us um, the cardio band system um, maybe within 30 seconds, what are the main features um, that, that are helpful to work, especially on the tricuspid valve? So first of all, the leading pathology usually of tricuspid regurgitation is annular dilation. And therefore it is, it is an, a nice idea to use a device which can reduce annular anatomy. And that's what the cardio band does. It comes from the anterior side 
uh, and then you implant it to the from the lateral to the posterior side with the help usually of 15 to 17 anchors and there is a wire in between which you can foreshorten and by this you can shrink if you will the annulus by a, by a couple of centimeters and by this reduce septorolateral diameter and ultimately hopefully also reduce tricuspid regurgitation. Okay, and do we have clinical data on there? Yes, we do. Sorry. The first yeah. first data uh, came, which came out will came from the trial repair study, and and they are comparable to the to the data which we see here. This is a drive-in study. It's a it's a commercial study. After, C, after CE mark approval in, in Europe, multi-center study, core lab adjudicated and has a clinical event committee. And what you can see here baseline, it's the second column on the left. Uh, you can see that most of the patients had uh, torrential, massive or severe tricuspid regurgitation. And then if you look at discharge and even after 30 days, which is the fourth column from the left, you can see that roughly 70% of the patients presented with TR moderate or even less, which is also an encouraging result. And again, this is core lab adjudicated. And that was followed by an improvement in, in heart failure symptoms as assessed by New York Heart Class. Uh, almost every patient New York three or four, uh, you can see that on the right side and after 30 days, of course, no, it's not a controlled study. 74% of the patients with moderate or less symptoms uh, concerning their heart failure. So okay. that's very encouraging. Perfect. And I think you even brought more data on a world wild experience in a real world setting. Yeah, this is, data, this is data from a, from a couple of centers uh, gathered together and, and brought forward by the, by the Cologne group. And you, you can see they, they, they mirror the results we have seen in the tri repair study and also in the tri pen study. Uh, in initially, almost every patient with severe or larger TR and after the procedure, uh, most of the patients, roughly 70% of the patients with moderate or less and this, uh, as a consequence of this, heart failure symptoms are reduced uh, within 30 days, as you can see on the right side. So overall, I think very intriguing results again. And now we move to the last topic of, of our interview. And we will focus now on complete replacement of the um, tricuspid valve. Ralph, would you like to comment on, on this uh, movie and quickly explain your evoke valve system to us? Yes, so with pleasure. You see here that we have a transfemoral transvenous uh, system with a 28 French delivery system. So very important. This is only a venous puncture. We use a safari wire, as you can see here, uh, into the right ventricle, which is uh, deployed by a steerable sheath. We implant then a valve with nine anchors simultaneously into the cords and leaflets of the tricuspic valve and have an added ceiling with the outer stent uh, to the annulus uh, of the tricuspid valve. Um, the inner valve is a normal tissue valve, as we know it from Tavr, but a very specialized soft external second stand that adopts to the contraction uh, of the tricuspid valve. And this is done here under fluoroscopic and three-dimensional and MPR echo guidance. So very interesting new concept. And perhaps we can see the first results in the next slide. So here we can see uh, the first data of the TriSense study. Uh, that uh, analyzed after the compassionate use experience uh, the efficacy of the evoc valve to reduce TR severity with a core lab adjudication. As you can see, the uh, great severe massive and torrential, so very severe graduations were present at the baseline, and they could be reduced in 98% of the cases to non trace or mild which is typical for a transcatheter replacement system and superior to tricuspic tear. On the right-hand side, you can see the performance of the valve after implantation. And please note that there is no transvalvular nor a paravalvular leakage uh, in this valve implant. So I think um, from this point of view, I would like um, to summarize, I think we have seen three um, upcoming um, new developing uh, technologies from Edward Life Science that allows us um, to help with very good clinical results um, um, to, to, to treat a tricuspid valve um, disease. 
And um, um, since we are running out of time, I would like to thank again um, 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 Professor von Badeleben and um, Professor Nick and Nick um, for uh, guiding us through these new technologies and thank also Edwards uh, for putting together this type of session and developing these new technologies for percutaneous um, tricuspid valve repair. Thanks and have a successful EuroPCR 2021. Thank you.